worship our King Jesus this morning. I don't know about you, but it's been a stressful week, right? So right now in this moment, we're going to give God all of that, all of those feelings, everything that we went through this week. We're going to lift it up to God, amen, because He is good and He can do what is impossible. He can lift our burdens. So let's give it to Him this morning, amen. Let's worship Him.
family welcome again to church at home it is my honor to be with you this morning if you enjoyed worship i want you guys to put praise hands in the chat wasn't worship awesome just getting to be together and worshiping together praising god something happens and he transforms our heart brings peace in our atmosphere amen so i want to encourage you guys to press in even deeper as we go through the rest of our service we have a great service ahead welcome again to church at home Right now we have the opportunity to continue to worship in our giving. And I was praying about 
what we should share this morning in regards to our tithes and offerings. And the Lord kept bringing up in my heart this amazing verse, which it says in Psalm 136, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. I love this verse so much, especially the end where it talks about his love endures forever. And right now in our world, there is so much going on. This year, there is so much going on. And that part is just such a great focus for my life right now, that his love endures forever. And we're to give thanks to him in all seasons, that his love isn't great just in the good seasons, in the high mountaintops, but also in the valleys, in the most challenging of times. And right now, in this moment, in our offering, in our tithes, we have the opportunity to give thanks to God for all that He has done and He is doing in every single season. He is faithful. So I would love for us to pray together as we prepare our gift and thanks for God. Will you guys join me? Dear Heavenly Father, we love you so much. And we thank you in this moment for your faithfulness, for your love that endures forever. You are so good. We ask that you bless the gift and the giver this morning. We thank you, God, with all our heart for who you are, for your faithfulness. We trust you in this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, church, we have an awesome rest of the service ahead. Pastor Michael is starting a brand new series. I want you guys to get ready, lean in, take notes, and let's welcome in the chat. Welcome, Pastor Michael. Hey church, good morning. So great to see you. So great to be with you this beautiful Sunday morning. I hope you're doing well. I hope you had your Cheerios or, uh, uh, or your cornflakes or whatever it is and your cup, cup of coffee. It's so great to be with you every Sunday. I'm excited to get in the word with you this morning. And wasn't worship amazing? Wasn't worship awesome? Can we give my wife and the team some praise uh, just for their musicianship and just their anointed selves leading us in worship? Um, also, while you're at it, please just put a clapping emoji for our production crew, our sound crew, um, the Cause Church and everybody uh, that is making this possible. We're grateful for our team and we're grateful to serve you and serve the body. And I'm just so, so proud of our church in this season, in this climate uh, that we have been propelling forward uh, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hey, uh, I, I'm so excited. We are starting a new series. And uh, before I go into that, I am so grateful and thankful to have uh, just shared our last series with you um, uh, called Peacemakers. And if that's something that would uh, bless your life or you know that, that would be something to bless someone else's life in the season, in the climate that we're in, please share that message uh, easily, freely um, through the YouTube, the link below. And I would love for you to share this message with a family member, with someone who is in need of hope. Um, right now, times are crazy and there's a lot of chaos and we're in need of some stability and some real hope in our life and in our soul. So please share this message. And I know that, so to speak, we're, you know, working from home, we're at home. Some of us are going to work and Times are different, but I still want to urge you to share the gospel, um, whether it's just your heart and your life and sharing it or sharing this message um, by getting the message of Jesus out there. Amen. So I just want to invite you to share. And also, if you're watching 
for the first time today, this morning, or you've been engaging with us and we've never met you. Maybe you've been engaging with us for the last month or two months or eight months, so to speak, during COVID. Please reach out to us. We love to just know who you are. Go to connect at the calling la.com and uh, tell us who you are. Tell us how you found us. We love to connect with you. Amen and amen. Uh, We're going to be in a new series for the next few weeks as we just ended our last one. We're going to be in a new series this morning called Grateful Series. Write Grateful Series on the chat right now. Uh, This series, as I like most messages, I spend a lot of time pursuing the presence and the heart of Jesus. And I can tell you that as we engage in this morning's message, I believe that the anointing of Jesus is on this message. I have heard him peaceably and calmly and very beautifully share with me, Michael, I want you to share this message with your church this morning, especially and through through what we're going through as a nation and as a people. But this message series called Grateful Series is designed to position you in in an attitude of gratitude. Come on, somebody, write that on the chat right now. An attitude of gratitude, all right? So we're gonna be talking about this for the next three weeks or so, all right? Um, Let's go ahead and go into the scripture. We're going to be in Acts chapter 27. Initially, when the Lord had shared with me about Grateful Series, I'm like, yes, let's do this, Jesus. It's going to be awesome. And by the way, we're not just talking about being grateful just because it's Thanksgiving. You're like, I know, Pastor Michael, you're talking about being grateful because it's Thanksgiving. Yeah, I got it. No, I'll be honest with you. In prayer, the, the Lord had shared this with me. But also you have to know this as a believer, all right? And I hope you're taking notes. Bust out a tablet, bust out your iPad or some Post-its, bust out, you know, the notes section on your phone or whatever it is. Being grateful and the theology of Thanksgiving is huge to the Christian faith. You know, there's a book called the Psalms, all right? And the Psalms is a book of poetry and poems and songs about Thanksgiving, to God, all right? We'll be talking about that. So the, the, theologically speaking, Thanksgiving is a huge concept in the Christian faith, in the Christian belief. So we're gonna be in Acts chapter 27 this morning. And as I was uh, studying, I thought, God, you want me to park the message here and talk about being grateful in Acts chapter seven? I was like, all right, let's do this. So we're gonna be in Acts chapter 27 and we're gonna start from verse 27 um, and so on, all right? So let's go go ahead and get our Bibles or our Bible apps out, all right? It says this, uh, and my title says the shipwreck. And before that, it's the storm. It says twenty in 27, on the 14th night, we were still being driven across the Adriatic. And I'll explain the context. The Adriatic, Adriatic, Adriatic Sea, excuse me. When about midnight, the sailors sensed they were approaching land. They took soundings and found that their water was 120 feet deep. A short time later, they took soundings again and found it was 90 feet deep. Fearing that we would be dashed against the rocks, that we, uh, uh, that they, dashed against the rocks, they dropped four, four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. Verse 30, in an attempt to escape from the ship, the sailors let the lifeboat down in the sea, pretending they were going to lower some anchors from the bow. 31, then Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. So the soldiers cut the ropes and held the lifeboat and, and let it drift away. They cut, check this out, they cut the, the lifeboats. So in other words, what we're gonna be talking about this morning, all right, in the title of my message, I know I'm still mid scripture reading, but the title of my message is how to be grateful in a storm. Write that down in the chat right now. How to be grateful in a storm. All right. Uh, uh, I'm gonna, so I'll wait to explain the context after I'm done reading. So it says this, just before dawn, Paul urged them all to eat for the, la- for the last 14 days, 14 days, watch this. He said, you have been in constant suspense and have gone without food. You haven't eaten anything. Now I urge you to take some food you need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair. It makes me think when I read that about Jesus who says that he knows every single hair that is on your head. You might be thinking, right? you might be in a storm right now 
And you might be thinking that God doesn't care or if God's not paying attention, but this is how close God pays attention to the details of your life. You know, I love my daughter to death and I'm, for, I'm still waiting for her whole uh, head to grow hair. Come on, somebody, all right? <laughs> um, but, but watch this, our God in heaven, our Father, He, know, he, he knows every single hair on your head. He's the God of the details. That's how in love with you he is. He knows his creation. He knows you. Come on, somebody. All right. Now I urge you to take some food. You need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. After he said this, he took some bread. And this is the part I want to park on in my message this morning. He, he, he took some bread. Oh, where is it at? at uh, 35. After this, he, he took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of them all. Then he broke it and he began to eat. They were all encouraged and ate some food, uh, food themselves. Altogether, there were 276 people on board the ship. When they had eaten as much as they wanted, they lightened the ship by throwing the grain into the sea. Let's go ahead and pray for the message this morning. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together as we worship you, as we lean into you, as we look to you, God, in the middle of a political storm, as we look to you in an economic storm, as we look to you in a, in a plague sort of storm, so to speak. God, in this hour, we're not dismayed by what's going on out there. God, we're anchored in the name of Jesus, where our hope is stronger than anything that the world could ever provide because our hope has risen from the dead. Our, our hope come, came out of, the, out of the grave, so to speak. Father, we place our trust in you, even though we don't understand everything. And Father, simply because there is a political storm going on out there this week, God, we choose to, to, to shut that down for a moment. And we choose to turn our eyes upon you, the Lord and Savior of the entire world. God, we know that the world is a mess, but we know heaven is stable and we know that your kingdom will never be shaken. And because your kingdom is not shaken, we are not shaken and our trust is in you all day long. So no matter what we see, no matter what we hear, no matter what's going on on the TV, God, we know that you are in control and we place our trust in you this morning. And Father, I say thank you to every single person in my church who is growing in the storm. I thank you for every single person in this storm who's leaning on you and growing in the name of Jesus. Speak to us this morning. Inspire people to become doers of the word and better Christians, so to speak, as we lean on you, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So I'm so excited to preach this message to you. And the title of my message again is How to Be Grateful in a Storm. How to be grateful in a storm. And you might be thinking, Michael, why are you talking about being grateful in a storm? Or why are you talking about Acts chapter 27? And I have to tell you, Acts chapter 27 is one of my favorite chapters in all of the Bible. And one of my heroes of the faith is the Apostle Paul. Now talking about the context this morning in Acts chapter 27, what is happening here? Because you're like, Pastor Michael, why are we talking about a boat? Why are we talking about a storm? And what, what is Paul talking about right now? Let me explain this to you. And as you know, I'm a pastor that studies my Bible and studies my word. I love the word of God. All right. And there's some power up in this Bible. Come on, somebody. All right. But in explaining the context, what, has, what is happening here is Paul is a prisoner on this ship. All right. He, he became a prisoner in Jerusalem right before this. Okay. He had been spreading the gospel, preaching the good news to the Gentiles. Uh, uh, the gospel was spreading. He had faced issue or uh, certain uh, challenges in every city that he's preaching. And now he's bringing the gift back to Jerusalem. But the Jews there find opposition against him and have heard that he's preaching and teaching the good news of the Bible and teaching customs that are different than the law of Moses. So they arrest him, they put him in jail. I'm giving you a re really quick, fast uh, Reader's Digest version, all right? So now they put him in jail and now he's being transferred to Rome where Paul wants to go is, is Rome. And the, and the will of God, God's desire is that Paul actually goes to Rome to testify. Why? Watch this. The most powerful city at the moment in all of the entire world, 
I can ask you a question right now. That's like today, what's the most powerful city, so to speak, in the entire world? What's that? It's probably Washington, D.C., right? Well, in this time, in this framework, it was Rome. Rome was the, the, the most important, powerful city in the Roman Empire, in the Roman world. They conquered the known world. So now Paul is on his way, sailing to Rome to testify about the Lord Jesus Christ having done nothing wrong, right? You, you see that? All right. Well, what happens is on the way to Rome, they, they sail. And then uh, there's a little bit of some drama. Paul, as a prisoner, speaks up and he tells the captain, right now we're headed into fall and into winter. Right now is not a good season to be traveling. Come on, somebody. All right. And the, <coughs> excuse me, and the captain of the ship, they pretty much say, you're a prisoner. We're not listening to you, all right? So what happens is they actually start to sail for Rome in the fall, winter. And there's a powerful, famous uh, a storm that arises every year, so to speak, called the Northeaster, all right? And what happens is they try to sail uh, in this storm. But watch this, the, the storm gets the best of the ship. And it's in this storm that we have this story today. Now, I want to share this with you. And I believe it's a word from God to us this, this morning. Because we are in a political storm. We are in a plague of a storm. We are in a financial crisis of a storm. Can I ask you, what storm are you going through this morning? You know, I, one of my passions and my callings in my life is to preach to the hurting. Let me tell you, if you got it together, boo-boo, go watch another pastor. But I'm here this morning to preach to the hurting. And it's always been said that if you preach to the hurting, you will always have an audience. Come on, somebody. We are all a work in progress. But what storm are you in this morning? Despite all those storms, are you in a marital storm? Are you in a financial storm? Are you worried about your job uh, for uh, uh, you know, keeping you on board or not? Are you in a storm where you think your life is sinking this morning? This morning, I want to teach you how to be grateful even in the middle of a storm. Come on, somebody. I want to teach you to have a posture and a position and an attitude of being grateful and thankful no matter what you're going through in your life. And this is going to be a series uh, throughout, throughout the weeks. It says this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 18 in the Amplified, Amplified Version. It says, in every situation... Write this in the chat right now. I love my chat crew. I actually was thanking God for you uh, in my prayers before I was speaking the sermon. Thanking every one of you for participating and engaging. It says this, in every situation, write that down right now on the chat. In every situation. Do you see that already? It doesn't say in sometimes. It doesn't say when you feel like it. It doesn't say when you got your, you know, your cozy sweater on, your throw, your blanket, when you're watching your favorite TV show on Netflix, all right? It says in every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God, all right? For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. It's God's will, church, that we be thankful no matter what we're going through. You know why? Because we have something right here that can never be shaken, stolen, rusted, uh, dust, uh, so to, or rusted or, um, or, or can be destroyed or moved, so to speak. Why? Because we have Jesus right here. Come on, somebody. No matter what's going on out there. Come on, somebody. All right. We have Jesus. In every situation, be thankful for this is God's will in your life in Christ Jesus. So it's not so much about feel, be, have, you know, having the right temperature on, having the right clothes on, having the right, being in the right season of your life. Every season and everything, be thankful. And you know what, why this is powerful? Because this is the man who faced so many challenges in his life preaching the good news, uh, uh, going to prison for teaching the good news, all right, being beaten, uh, being stoned, all right. Now, even, now in, uh, on a boat in the middle of a storm on the way to Rome, he's saying give thanks in every season. Come on, somebody, I want to teach you that. And it's not just about Thanksgiving, this, the holiday. Thanksgiving is a way of life. Come on, someone, you out there, all right. Thanksgiving is a way of life, all right? There's a story of a pastor or a preacher in his church service who would always, uh, uh, at every service during worship, would always kind of take a peek behind him, 
All right. And the reason for that is he would always check to see how many people came to service or who is there and who is not there. And uh, 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 during the drive home after each service, he was always kind of upset and always kind of hurt and always uh, kind of in a way complaining and grumbling, wondering, God, uh, he wasn't pleased with whenever he took a look back, he wasn't pleased with the turnout that was behind him. So on his way home, he would always tell God, God, why, why are you not bringing more people to church? God, I'm doing my very best, but God, I can't see what you're doing. All right. Well, finally, after praying and praying and uh, a, a lot of these prayers, Finally, God did speak to him one day and, get, and said, you know what? Uh, you need to stop looking behind you and you need to start focused on, what's ahead, be focused on what's ahead of you. Stop telling me what I'm not doing and start looking about, at what I am doing all right, in your life and in your ministry. Stop up seeing who's not there and start th- uh, watching who is there. Come on, somebody. And in all honesty and all uh, humility, that person is me. All right, I feel like I've learned the greatest uh, a life lesson in my life and in my ministry about being grateful. Let me tell you, God wants to bless you, boo-boo. God wants to do great things with your life. But let me tell you, he won't do it prematurely in your life. Why? Because you may not be able to handle the blessings that are in your future without uh, being appreciative and grateful right now in the moment uh, uh, of what you're going through or wherever you're in uh, in your life. The truth of the fact is we started our church with hardly anybody or anything or early on. And I believed that God gave us a word. I believed that God was with us. But so for some reason, I didn't see the fruit manufacturing uh, early in those days, but I kept believing. And it wasn't until uh, fasting, praying and being in my word that I've heard the Lord say, I'm with you. Believe what I'm doing. Stop looking behind. That's a word for someone today. You're not grateful because you keep looking behind you. Your focus, on, your focus is on the past, who hurts you, what happened to you. But watch this. God wants to bless you and take you into new places of your career, of your life, and of your dreams and in your spirituality by keeping your eyes ahead, not by keeping your eyes on what's behind you. Come on, somebody, you out there, all right? Stop being focused. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Actually, that's my point. All right. That's one of my points. But I want to teach you how to be grateful in the middle of a storm. You know, I don't want you to be distracted by everything that you see out there right now. You know, this week I have been watching the news just like many of you. Man, my eyes have been glued to the TV flipping through all the channels to be honest with you. And I got cable this year, so it kind of worked out for me, so to speak. But there came a time just watching it where the Lord just said, enough, enough of all that. I had to turn off the TV and I was working too at the same time, you know, work, probably like you working and, and, and watching the TV. And God just said, enough, enough of all that. I had to just, I had to turn it off. And, and honestly, I had to go to my knees and pray. Let me tell you, if you have enough time to worry about something, you have enough time to pray about something. But God went to my knees, started praying for my country, started praying for the, the next president. Started praying for, uh, you know, at the time I didn't know who that is, all right? But started just praying, praying for my church. Started praying for the church in America. Started praying for God's will. And you know, there's a sweet calm a serenity, you know, despite, let me tell you, just because of what you see out there, that's not the only narrative. That's not the only story. Let me tell you, God is working, all right? God is working despite what they're all saying out there. Come on, somebody, all right? So uh, one of my points in this message the Bible says this in the, in the message version, Acts chapter 27, verse four, Paul being in the storm, he says this, the winds are against us, all right? Sometimes in life, the, winds won't always, the wind won't always be at your back. Sometimes the wind won't always be in your sails. What do you do then? And how do you respond? Do you respond by griping and complaining? Do you respond by saying, God, well, it's not my fault. You gave me a bad hand. Come on, somebody. Let me give. Let me let you in for a little bit. My whole life, I feel, and it sounds like a little bit of a violin. Bring it out right now. But this is honest and, and true. My whole life, I felt like I've always had a bad start in life. 
my parents being in jail, my parents being drug addicts, going to five different schools before uh, fifth grade. I mean, I've always had a bad start in my life, it felt like. But there came a point where I grew up and I matured in my life and I had to make a decision. You know what, am I gonna be a victim in my life? Am I gonna be woe is me and bring out the violins and God, I can't ever do anything great or do anything powerful in my life because of my, the hand that I've been dealt. Let me talk to someone today. You gotta change your focus. You gotta change your attitude, all right? Mo, uh, most of my life that, that has been the case. And even in the early on in the ministry, I kind of reverted to that. Well, God, we, you know, we didn't start with anything. We didn't start with anyone, so to speak. And, and this is the hand that I've been dealt. But watch this. This is a powerful lesson for someone today. You can either focus on what you don't have or can focus on what you do have. That's a big test for us. That was a big test for me. You know, instead of telling God what I don't have, I consistently always felt like the Lord had shared this with me then. And even now, and I've learned this lesson then is, is this. Michael, you know what? I'm not gonna move until you realize what you do have. What cards do you have in your hand? They may not be the cards that you want at the moment. They may not be the cards that you even like at the moment, but Michael, what cards do you have in your hand and how can you use those cards in your hand to the best of your benefit, to the best of your ability? I want you to grow in those with the cards that you do have at the moment. Yeah, sure, sure, life has been hard and life, let me tell you right now, the way I've looked at it is life um, didn't happen, those things didn't happen to me. Watch this, they happened for me to make me the man that I am today, to be the kind of believer I am today, to move forward with the conviction of faith that I have in the Bible and the word of God. Come on, somebody, despite what I'm going through, all right, in the middle of a storm, all right? So the Bible, uh, it says this in Acts chapter 27, the wind was against us. How are you responding right now in the middle of your storm with the wind being against you, so to speak? Are you complaining? Are you griping? Are you resorting to depression? It says this, and I'm skipping along in my notes. I hope you don't mind, but it says this, and I think this is powerful. In verse 38, Paul got some bread and he broke it and gave thanks. And this is reminiscent of what Jesus would do. And, and I believe even in the Jewish tradition is they would give thanks to God. But after doing so, it says this in verse 38, when they had eaten as much, because remember they haven't, they haven't eaten in 14 days, two weeks, because of the storm, all right, and the chaos of the storm, all right. It says this, when they had eaten as much as they wanted, they lightened the ship, watch this, they lightened the ship by throwing grain into the sea. In other words, they ate as much as they needed for that day or for the time and they threw out the extra weight that they didn't need. Why would they do that? Because the ship was, a, was gonna go under. The ship would have sunk with all of the uh, extra weight. Let me tell you, in order for you to be grateful in your life, oh, come on somebody. In order for you to succeed and be grateful in your life, all right, you need to throw out things that you don't need in your spirit. Come on somebody. It's time to start throwing out some uh, negativity out of your life. It's, start, it's time to start throwing complaining out of your spirit. Come on somebody. It's time to throw out grumbling out out of your soul. Let me tell you, those things will make you sink. Those things will make you fall to the bottom of the ocean and in your life. Come on, somebody. You know, the, and I've said this before, the very thing that, that, that stopped the Israelites from going to the promised land, watch this, is they grumbled and they complained and they couldn't see it and they didn't believe it. Come on, somebody. Let's choose, all right? to throw some things outside, throw some things out of the ship, out of our ship that we don't need. Maybe a good practice for you, all right, is every morning that you get up, as you say, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this day. It may not be going in my way. It might be not, it, it might, things might not be going according to my, my plans or plans, all right, but I know I'm in your will and I know I trust you. Watch this, because now you're setting yourself up for success. Instead, a lot of people get up in the morning and they go to bed. They always weigh, weigh themselves down by saying, things are not going my way, all right? Things don't look so bright. Things, things look bad out there. But instead, see, this is what being grateful does. Being grateful unlocks some very powerful things in your life. Watch this, it allows you, being grateful, watch this, allows you to see 
what God is doing, not what God is not doing, right? It's a very, very, very big point right there. God wants you to see, come on somebody, put C on the chat right now, right? C, God wants you to see what he is doing, not paying attention to what he's not doing, all right? God knows what he's not doing in your life. You know what he's not doing in your life. But let me ask you this. Do you know what he's doing in your life? Do you realize how he's leading you, leading you in your life? Do you understand what he's doing with the prayers that you've been praying? Let me tell you, God wants you to recognize that he is moving, that he is leading, and that he is making a way uh, in your life, all right? And I promise you, he is, all right? One of my other points is this, being grateful is a focus. Write that on the chat right now, focus. Being grateful is a focus. I, rec- I realize I'm running out of time, but I'm gonna keep going through. Being grateful is a focus. So much of the time and early on in the ministry for me, especially with the calling, as I was so focused on what God is not doing, I was so focused on the lack. I was so focused on wanting, all right, and needing. But watch this, you need to focus on what God is doing in your life and focus on, focus in prayer. Watch this, it says this uh, in uh, Colossians 4, 2 in the Amplified Version. It says, be persistent and devoted to prayer, being alert and focused in your prayer life. Watch this, with an attitude of thanksgiving, with an attitude of thanksgiving. You know, if there's a prayer that you could say, uh, only one prayer you could say your whole life, every time you prayed, you know what that could be? And it would be totally sustain, uh, so to, totally, totally okay, excuse me. It would be, thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. We have to understand that though there are wants in our life and there are desires in our life, like Philippians chapter four, verse six says, the desires and the wants and the needs that have to also be coupled with in this very same prayer. It has to be coupled with thanksgiving. It's God, this is what my needs are. God, these are my desires. But God, watch this, I'm also grateful for you have done, doing, done this in my past. I'm grateful for you have been sh- having shown up in my life in this area. Because watch this, if you're praying, which is great and awesome, and I commend you for doing that. And if you ha- aren't, you need to in Jesus' name. But watch this, if all your focus is in prayer is God, I need this. God, I want this. God, I'm lacking in this area. All of those things, and it's great but you're not saying thank you my, to God. It might be he, that person not realizing the full picture yet. They have not seen how I come through yet. Come on, somebody, you understand what I'm saying? All right, that is something that I, as I shared earlier, that I had gone through in my life. And it's a big, big lesson I've learned. And I wanna teach you this, this over this series, all right? How about this? Being grateful is an attitude. Write that down on the chat right now, attitude. Being grateful is an attitude. Just look at the apostle's demeanor, even in the middle of a storm. Watch this. It says this in verses uh, 34 or 33. Just before Don Parra urged him, you have been in constant, watch this, and I love this. You've been in constant suspense. Let me pause there for a second. Haven't we all been in suspense for the last week over this chaos? Haven't we been in constant suspense in the last eight months of COVID-19, God knows the suspense that we're going through. He knows the susp- He knows every hair, hair on our head. Come on, somebody. All right. But watch this. Paul continues on to say this. You have been in constant suspense and have gone without food. You haven't e- even eaten anything. Now I urge you to take some food you needed to survive. All right, not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. I'm here to declare to you, some. come on somebody, in the name of Jesus, you're going to make it, boo-boo. You're going to pull through through this storm. No matter what's going on out there, you're going to make it through the, disp- through the suspense, through the issues. Watch this, you're not going to lose a hair on your head because you follow Jesus, because you trust in his name, because you're standing on his word. Come on, y'all, all right? You're not just anybody, you're a child of the living God. You're holding on to every promise, you're taking 
no matter his very word. Therefore, you're going to succeed and fall. And, uh, uh, you're not going to uh, shipwreck. You're not going to sink. Come on, somebody. You're anchored in the name of Jesus. You're going to pull through. That's where you say amen. That's where you stand up and say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, somebody. You out there. All right. But watch this. I love his point. He says this, take care of yourself. Get some food. He says, take care of, you. write that on the chat right now. Take care of yourself. Let me tell you right now, you're not taking care of yourself, boo-boo, if all you do is watch CNN. If all you do is watch Fox News or if you're surfing between both. I've done that, all right, to get both. But they're both crazy, all right, honestly, all right. But watch this. Taking care of yourself means turn it off. Taking care of yourself means take a walk and start praying and start being thankful and grateful. Instead of worrying about who is going to become president, be thankful that God is on the throne no matter who's in charge. Come on, somebody. That he is sovereign and that the nations are like a drop in the bucket to him and that he loves his people, the bride, his church. Come on, somebody. He's saying take care of yourself. God wants you to take care of yourself. No one can, watch this. Nobody can do that for you but you. Your wife can't do that for you. Your husband can't do that for you. And watch this. God wants you to take care of yourself for you. All right, he does. And when you take care of yourself, watch this, the family's gonna be cool because you, you good, all right? Take care of yourself, all right? I've learned this in ministry, why? Because we're constantly taking care of other people, constantly, constantly, almost every, all the time, all right? But watch this, we need to take care of ourselves too. Come on, somebody, all right? How can the helpers, uh, uh, we, need, we, need, we need rest, all right? I'll, I'll, that's another message for another, in, in itself. I'm gonna leave that right there, all right? But take care of yourself, all right? Take care of yourself. Uh, where did I go off on that? Oh yeah, but uh, talking about Paul's demeanor. Watch this, and this preaches. He says, now I urge you to take some food. You need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. After he said this, he took some bread and gave thanks to, to God. But, and watch this. This is an anecdote. This is the side thing right here. Watch this. Jesus Christ is the bread of life. This is symbolic. Watch this. That we're going to make it through the storm. That not just this food that's going to, is just sustainable for two weeks or a week or a few days. Watch this. We're going to make it through the storm because Jesus Christ is the bread of life. And he's the one who's going to sustain us through the chaos. And he is. All right. But watch this going on. Then he broke it and he began to eat. Watch this. They, say they, or watch this. Write they on the chat. They. They were all encouraged and ate some food for themselves. All together there were, and I love that, uh, I love that Luke is saying this. All together there were 276. I want you to do me a favor. Write 276 on the chat right now. 276. All together there were 276 of us on board. When they had eaten as much as they wanted, uh, they lightened the ship, throwing the grain into the sea. Watch this. Being grateful is an attitude. Look at his demeanor. Paul's not tripping. Come on, somebody. Paul ain't tripping, right? I ain't tripping on the chat right now. Paul's not tripping in the storm. He seen an angel right before this tell him, Paul, right, not one of you will be lost. You will go to Rome and you will make it. I'm here. I believe that God is telling us the same thing. So watch this. We ain't going to trip. Come on, somebody, because we're going to make it through. All right. But look at his demeanor in the middle of a storm. You know, these people may, may or most likely were not Christians. But watch his demeanor. His demeanor and his attitude of gr gratitude is contagious. It's, con it's infectious. Because he's like Caesar Milan, calm, cool, and collected, all right? It's in everybody else is okay. You know, through this experience of COVID-19, the Lord is teaching me, Michael, just be cool. Trust me. And that will preach in itself. You're going to inspire people just by remaining uh, cool, so to speak. Don't trip. I know what I'm doing. Remain strong in me. Come on, somebody. How about if you kept it cool when you went to work? How about if you kept it cool at the family when you came home from work? How about you keep it cool when you, you know, so to speak, at the dinner table? Watch this. This is all infectious and is going to be uh, just inspiring to people that are all around you. 276 people. All right. Uh, so, so that's significant. According to Merriam-Webster, the definition of attitude means a settled way of thinking or feeling about someone or something typically one that is reflected in a person's behavior. Watch this. Attitude is also positioning 
and it's about posturing. You know, I can't tell you enough that in the mid, uh, enough in this storm that we've been going through in COVID-19, all right, how, how this has been so incredible for me in my life. You know, obviously I, I'm a minister and I, I actually read this every day. I read the Psalms every day and I just finished the book of Romans. So I, I read the Bible every day and every morning because I need this news. I need this news, all right? A pastor said, you know why they call it breaking news, talking about the news on TV? It's because it breaks you, it destroys you. And that's absolutely true. But I stay focused right here. My posture is on the word of God. My position is, is, is as a child of God. I'm receiving every blessing, every promise. I'm being stabilized and sustained by his word. Come on, someone, you out there, watch this. Do you know that this is illegal in over 200 countries? This tells you that this thing right here is so powerful, all right? And it is trustworthy. I, I urge you to be in your word in this season, all right? And lastly, how to be grateful in the middle of a storm. Watch this. So it means having the right attitude. Being grateful means to have a focus, all right? It means to be infectious and to be uh, um, inspiring to those around you with this very attitude, all right? Uh, uh, but it, there's one point that I kind of want to land the pl land the plane, so to speak. It says this uh, in Acts chapter 27, verses 41. It says this, but the ship struck a sandbar and ran aground. The bow struck fast and would not move. And the stern was broken to pieces. And it goes on to say the uh, same context, verse 44, the rest uh, were to get there on planks. So what eventually happened to the ship, watch this, isn't it interesting? God said, everyone's gonna make it. God said, Paul, you're gonna make it to Rome. But the storm actually got the best of the boat and the boat uh, struck a sandbar, the stern broke. It was chaos, all right? And, 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 and watch this. Let me read the rest of it. The rest were to get there on planks and other pieces of the ship. In this way, everyone reached safely. Talking about the island of Malta. It's interesting that God said they would make it, but never said it was going to be, be crushed, the, the, the boat, so to speak. I recognize right now that for many of us, for the last eight months, it's been a shattering experience. I recognize that it's been difficult. And I want to just uh, minister to some of you right now who are broken. Some of you right now, you might think, my, Pastor Michael, how can I be grateful? I'm in pieces. I just lost my job. My marriage is failing. My kids are out of control. Things don't look right for me. And you're asking me to be grateful. My life is in pieces, you're, you're saying. But watch this. God will get you through the storm in pieces as if he has to. Because that's how much he loves you. Just like these people in the, in the ship, all 276 of them made it to the island of Malta. They made it on planks of the ship. God will take your life in pieces. Come on, somebody. I'll never forget when I gave my life to Jesus. I was at the age of 21. I was bruised. I was broken. I was wounded. And my life, I felt like I had no future. I, my life was in absolute shambles and in pieces. But watch this. I gave my, Jesus, my life to Jesus. I wasn't playing hopscotch with Jesus anymore. I wasn't playing around with Jesus. I gave him all of me. And watch this. God has been putting me back together ever since the age of 21. I'm not completely there yet, but I'm on my way. Come on, somebody. You out there, all right? I just want to let you know it's okay to be broken. It's okay to let God take you in pieces. Let me tell you, if he has to, you're going to make it through this storm. You're going to make it even if you're in pieces. All right. There's a story of a little blind boy. He, he, uh, this little blind boy was sitting on, uh, uh, on the stairs uh, of an old building. And he, he had this hat uh, uh, at his feet where he was collecting coins. And he had this sign for people to read. And it said, uh, it, it's, I <laughs> forgot, it says, I am blind, please help. All right, so as people passed on, they threw coins into the hat. And there came a man who threw some coins in his hat. And he said uh, to the boy, can I see your sign? And, he, and the boy said, sure. He took the sign and he erased what was originally there and he altered uh, the script, so to speak. And he gave it back to the boy and he went on his way. 
And to the boy's amazement, after that man had taken that sign, he realized that as more people passed by, more people started to give to, to him and his hat and the hat started to become filled up. Well, the man who changed the inscription came back and the boy who was blind, he, he uh, by listening to the way he f walked, recognized that it was him. And he said, sir, why, uh, uh, what did you do to my sign? Because I find that more people are giving and giving. What did, what did you write? And the gentleman said, um, well, I just honestly told the truth, but I said it in a little bit of a different way than you had originally said it or wrote it. Uh, and he said, and, and he said, what did the sign say? And he said, he said this, he said, today is a beautiful day, but I cannot see it. Uh -huh. And what the inscription merely pointed out the first time that he was he blind and couldn't see. But watch it the second time about what, what the man did is he changed the way he, he, his attitude was about how he's seeing the circumstance. I'm here to tell you this morning that there's something to see even in the storm. There's something to be grateful for even in the middle of the storm. God is doing something even though you don't see it or even though you don't feel it. Come on, somebody. God is moving on your behalf. Maybe it's time to shut the door, pray, and see how God is moving in your life. Helen Keller said this, when all you can feel are the shadows, turn your face to the sun. There is always a bright side, even if only that is not worse and it can always be worse. In other words, like 1 Thess Thessalonians 5.18, there's always, it's always something to be grateful for in every season. And I promise you, God is using the circumstances around you. Pay attention to make you better, to make you stronger, to make you wiser and more determined in his plan for your life. Come on, someone, you out there. Let's go ahead and bow our heads to pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we have together. Lord, I ask that you would open up our eyes in this storm that we're facing as a nation and even as we're facing a storm personally. Lord, we know like in the te New Testament that you're in the storm with us and you're not gonna let the storm run amok that it's gonna get out of control and that we're gonna lose our lives, so to speak. Lord, reveal to us where you're, what you're doing and how you're moving. God, we want to grow and we want to be positioned and challenged in a way that, that is going to make us better Christians, stronger Christians and more faithful Christians and committed Christians, Lord. God, we know that no matter what is going on out there, we are anchored to you through your word and through your Holy Spirit. In fact, Holy Spirit, I pray and speak inspiration over our church that you would reveal to us, God, the plans that you have for us plans to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us a future and to give us a hope. We love you with all of our hearts and we trust you no matter what's going on. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen and amen. I really wanna take a moment real quick to give you an invitation. You might be watching for the first time. You might, be, you might have been watching for the last few months and you're figuring out this whole Jesus thing. You're wondering if he's real. You're wondering if you can trust him. Let me tell you, as I shared earlier, Giving your life to Jesus is the most important thing you can do in your life. I don't know what people honestly are doing without Jesus right now. There is no solid hope out there. Money, a, a candidate, and let me tell you, a candidate is gonna disappoint you. They're not gonna fulfill all of your promises, all, all their promises e either, so to speak. Um, but I wanna let you know, Jesus is the author and the creator of all life. He is the savior of the world. He died on a cross for the sins of humanity. And there, was no, there is no CEO, there's no company, there's no uh, antivirus that could ever solve the problem of sin. The only person that can solve the problem and has solved it is Jesus dying on the cross. What this means is that Jesus took the judgment of humanity for everybody who would believe in Jesus. He would take their judgment by their faith of him on the cross. I wanna ask you this morning, do you need to make a commitment to follow Jesus and get your life right with him? Do you need to make a recommitment to follow Jesus? Because you used to follow him. Let's take this time, all right? Because we never know the hour in which he comes back. We never know even for our own lives uh, what, is, what, what tomorrow brings. Why not give your life to Jesus today? By way of doing that, I would love for you to repeat this prayer after me. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and bow our heads and pray. Fa say, say this, dear God, 
Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. I believe I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a savior. Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life. Give me a future, be my anchor in this storm. I trust you, I believe you, I confess with my mouth and I believe with my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. My friend, if you just said that for the first time, I wanna congratulate you. Please email, email us at the link that you see below. I wanna get you a Bible and connect with you so that you can mature and grow in your walk with Jesus. I love you, church. I'll see you soon. God bless you. And thank you so much for leaning in in this season.